Hello traders, this is Victoria from Trade Pro Academy and I hope you're super excited for this video because we promise this a lot, right? This is a much anticipated video and it is a futures volume profile trading strategy. Now this is gonna be one of the simplest strategies you will see um, ever based on futures and it's based on auction theory. And what we're gonna be covering is gonna be the S&P 500 E-mini futures and how to trade them with a very, very easy to understand volume profile trading strategy. So I hope you guys are excited about that. But before we get this started, I wanna welcome you guys to our master class. So go check out our website for our free, very free futures masterclass webinar that talks about price action and also order flow. So if you haven't seen that yet, go check that out and let's dive right into this video. But before we do that, again, we're gonna stall you out. I want you guys to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, drop a comment down below. Do you guys trade with the volume profile? Very simple, yes or no. And if you don't, why not? So let's get started. Now this volume profile strategy hinges on having the understanding of four concepts that we're gonna go through. Well, number one, pretty easy, right? You have to have a software that provides a volume profile that can split into different sessions. I prefer Sierra charts, right? We're gonna be using Sierra charts for this. You also have to have a cumulative 20 day volume profile. You also have to have a volume profile for each individual session that splits up Globex and overnight. And then you have to have a basic understanding of auction theory and volume profile. So we're gonna break all that stuff down for you guys and let's get started. So this volume profile strategy uses the combination of individual session profiles mixed with the cumulative 20 day volume profile. Volume profiles are typically seen as areas of balance and imbalance, the way that we like to call it, right? Where markets move from what is considered fair value to unfair value. And that's where auction theory really comes into play. So. With the basics of volume profiles, there's gonna be a few sections of the volume profile that you need to understand. The value area, right, step number one, the POC, the point of control, the value area high, the value area low, and ledges, right, volume profile ledges. That's gonna be key, five main concepts that we're gonna to cover today. So enough of this babble, why don't we get right in front of the screen and take a look at this and talk more about auction theory, step number one. Hello, hello traders. All right. So we are now in front of the screens here and we're going to be talking about the volume profile trading strategy for futures, right? The only one that you necessarily need. And it's a super basic one. Obviously, there are um, different volume profile stra trading strategies that we go through. Like uh, I, I use a few myself, but in terms of what we're going to be talking about today, is very simple, right? We're going to be using just this regular volume profile here on Sierra chart. It looks um, what I call a common volume profile. It's a volume profile that everyone should have, right? Um, it has just the general individual session profiles, right? You can see these individual uh, sessions right here. They're based on um, a profile that has a gray and blue area, right? The blue area being the value area and the gray area is everything outside the value area. And each of these sessions, right? Each of these profiles starts on a new session, right? So the shorter sessions here are going to be the regular trading hours. And over here are going to be the extended trading hours, the Globex session. So the premise of this strategy revolves around understanding how each of these sessions moves and rotates, right? Mainly, we're going to be focused on using the extended trading hours, the ETH, to trade right? The regular trading hours here, right? And we also have a 20 day volume profile that we'll go over uh, just a bit as well. But the main premise of this strategy is we're going to be using this extended hour trading session here. So quickly to review, the volume profile has a few main components, right? The blue area right here, no matter if it's the overnight session or the regular trading hour session is going to be right. The blue area is going to be the value area where you can find 70% of that session's volume traded, right? So we're going to have to remember that because we're going to be talking about auction theory very soon. Now, the remainder of this, we have the value area high, which extends if it's a naked value area high. That means if it trades, it creates and it doesn't trade again, it's going to extend. We have a value area low that would do the same thing, right? And these two areas sandwich the value area, right? They're going to they're gonna be on either end of the value area. We also have the point of control, right? Within each session, the point of control, again, will extend if it doesn't trade. And it's denoted by this yellow line in this circumstance. And then we also have our high volume nodes, right? That together 
create this cluster, right? Which we call a distribution, right? High volume nodes together. And then the low volume nodes are divots in the volume profile. So these are the very, very basics of understanding what is included in this profile. Now, what we want to talk about is going to be distribution theory or auction theory, right? So if we take into consideration that each value area, if we draw a very, very standard volume profile here, right? If we draw a standard volume profile, this is just what a regular distribution would look like. Let's crudely draw it here, right? So this is what a normal distribution would look like. Now, let's say this is the value area, right? The 70% of the most traded volume in that session. This is what we call fair price or balance, right? The balance is going to be within this area. So you can see by the looks of all these profiles, they don't necessarily exhibit properties of a normal distribution. However, they all have a value area, meaning they all have balance within them, right? That is what we're looking for, balance. Anything outside of the value area is what people would consider an imbalanced move or unfair value. Now, the value area is balanced and very important because, again, 70% of volume. That is where price would gravitate towards. Price wants to gravitate towards large volume areas, which in this case are going to be value areas. So in terms of distribution theory, Price moves from balance to balance. When price becomes imbalanced, it will either look for a balance elsewhere or start to create its own balance if it hasn't done so, right? And these balances, now that we're actually dropping significantly in the market, there's prior balances that we can look towards for price to fill into, right? So the technical aspect of the distribution theory, if we just draw it very, very easily right here, is you have a balanced area, right? Let's say these, these blocks are all balanced areas. And price, what price wants to do is stay within balance, right? And it's going to treat the ledges of balance as support resistance areas. And at some point, a move like this might happen. In this case, right, you can see it's an upward move through balance. This is an area where this market was once efficient, becomes quote unquote inefficient, where demand outweighs supply. And price enters into a new balance area and does the same, and eventually drops back into either this old balance, a new balance created somewhere else, right? Where supply theoretically would outweigh demand. And we have from inefficiency to efficiency to balance, and this continues and continues and continues, right? So this is the basis of distribution theory. When price exits balance, we have to understand that it becomes imbalanced. So remember, balance, if we connect that to the value areas, right, we are going to see this as the home for the price until it exits, right, and then creates balance elsewhere, so on and so forth. Now, the key component to these areas is that these balances, right, they have support resistance areas, which are going to be the value area highs and lows. So those areas are what's going to expel price from balance and act as a support or resistance structure. If we're within balance, it's going to act as a support or resistance structure. So understanding this very general premise, we can apply quote unquote balances and imbalances to the 20 day profile. In this case, instead of thinking about a value area as highs and lows, Think of it as big distribution blocks and where price drops off, right, from high volume node to the super low volume node is what we call a ledge, right? It's like a shelf. So this whole thing is a large balance. It is a distribution. Now, within that distribution, we can have individual levels, right? We can have these ledges that coincide like this, right? These market ledges, these profile ledges right here, whatever the case may be, right? Now, within this bigger balance, these ledges appear. Within these individual balances, you can see that the value area highs and lows are going to be those support resistance areas. And even within them, you have ledges. So the premise of this strategy, like I said, is understanding the extended trading hours. Because overnight, Globex session, you can see these are longer than the RTHs, right? They're longer 
and the RTHs mean that there's a lot more movement, ideally, right? There's a lot more time for price to move and do things in those areas. So we're going to be looking at the extended hours trading session and from that, constructing a plan for the regular trading hours based on a few rules and principles, right? Number one, we should outline where the overnight balance is, value areas, highs and lows from the overnight. Number two, we want to make sure that these areas can coincide with the larger profile legends. If they don't, we can just move them right slightly so they do coincide. But in this case, let's just use the value area highs and lows from this Globex session to understand what's going on in this session. So price is in balance. As long as price is in balance, it wants to maintain balance, meaning that when it holds the support structure of the balance, the next target up is going to be the top edge of the balance, right? It wants, or sorry, I should say the ultimate target is going to be the top end of that balance if it stays within balance, right? Obviously, there's a more intermediate target, the POC. So that is going to be the highest area of volume traded during that session. So as long as we can remain within balance, we would want to accept either end of that balance. Number two, if we exit outside of balance, we are going to use those balance ledges right now that we're outside of balance as support resistance areas to maintain an imbalanced structure, right? When we enter back into balance, the first target is going to be the POC and then ideally the other end of balance, right? The POC somewhere here, we reject. This time we hold out that balance, we continue imbalanced, right? In this example and this type of market environment, right? We want to understand how price opens, right? The regular trading hours based on the extended trading hours balance. If we open within the overnight balance, the idea is we want to target the POC and the other edge of balance. If we open below, right? Balance here, let's, let's take a look at this. If we open below the balance or above the balance, we're going to become in balance and look for balance elsewhere. So if we have this right here as the Globex balance for last night's session while I'm recording this, and we open within the balance, what are we going to do? We're going to be using that main resistance of balance as a cell to stay back within balance. We finally break and accept imbalance areas, and we're using it now as resistance to remain in the imbalance territory, right? So if we take this a step further and we look at how the day shaped up, if we understand what our imbalance and balance areas are, so let's take a deeper look into this. We can see how the day shaped up, right? The value area low is somewhere around uh, these 56s to 54s. The value area high is somewhere around the 80, right? So 80, 81 area. So let's keep those areas in mind and take a look at a different chart here. So when we look at this different chart, right, we're going to map out the balance areas from the overnight session. So it can automatically do this, but I'm just going to do this so we can see it very clearly here, right? The top end we said was about like 81-ish. It's a little too high. 81-ish. And then the bottom end was around like these 50 fours, right? 56s into that area. So this is our balance. We want to ask ourselves during the strategy, where does the price open, right? Price opens within balance. So when we come into the bottom end of balance, the idea is we want to hold within balance, right? And obviously there's going to be other metrics, right? Like the dominant order flow to help us out with these, but you can see we sustain balance. We hold within balance. We come back up. We hold within balance, right? Two potential trades there. We come down, we try to hold into balance failure and we get a significant dump, but it actually holds imbalance, right? The first rejection of imbalance, we can sell that imbalance area to continue to stay within that imbalance zone, right? Now it's a new different zone in the imbalance. Who knows how far it can go? It comes up, right? Another opportunity, except within balance, we want to hold the balance support to take us into the POC, to take us into the tops, doesn't get that far. We come back outside of balance, hold outside of balance, multiple tests, right, for opportunities, and so on and so forth. So 
The premise of this volume profile trading strategy is that we have to, one, understand where the Globex balance is, where the value areas are. Can they align better with the 20-day profile ledges, right? We adjust maybe a point or two. Then we see where does price open? Do we open within balance? Yes. We want to stay within balance. So we use confirmation at the value area lows of the Globex session and the value area highs to keep us within that balance. Can we escape outside of balance, right? Do we accept outside of balance? Do we get a 10-point move outside of that balance to, to really justify escaping? Yes. Okay. Use that balance area now as support resistance to remain in an imbalance zone, right? If we open outside of the Globex balance, we're going to look for the directionality in that imbalance direction. So if we opened above today, imagine this is the balance when we opened above here, we're going to look for potential trades into the upside, right? As long as we can hold this balance ledge support structure. Same thing if we open to the downside, we're going to look for that downward turn. So I want you guys to take a look at it. I want you guys to remember these sets of rules that we had, right? And back test these and really understand how this strategy works. Now, this is one of a few volume profile trading strategies that I use, right? And I taught you the basis of distribution theory here. And you can go and apply those to larger profile sets. So when you get the grasp of that, you can use the larger profile to identify different areas of distribution, how we can trade those levels, what some of the key levels are on these charts. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and stick around for this outro. I hope you guys really enjoyed that simple strategy to use with the volume profile. Go back, test it, check it out for yourselves. And on a daily basis, you can see how volume moves from balance to imbalance to balance, right? Where they accept balances and distributions and where they reject. So it's a very, very simple strategy to learn on the volume profile, right? One of the most simpler strategies that you can find out there based on trading futures. And it encompasses the majority of what I look for in the markets. So I hope you really enjoyed this much anticipated video. And again, I want you guys to go check out that masterclass, but not only do that, like, comment, and again, ring that little bell to notify when we do go live and drop videos just like these. You don't want to miss the next one. What else do you guys want to see? Drop a comment down below. We already talked about the volume profile. We talked about DOMs. We talked about different things. So what's next? Let me know.